Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Attack Productions today. Back up to again by Adam. As we pretty much are doing a history matchup without even intending to do a history matchup. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I brought the ragtag team from the new set, and Adam actually brought Raditz from the new set. So yeah, let's get into it. Like always, there's buttons, links, check them out. But blue on blue. This is going to be fun. Blue on blue. Yeah, and uh, they're... they're we didn't follow the Time Wars format in this one, <laughs> as you'll probably see. <laughs> so, th th before we get into the decks, both these decks have the ability to apply a unique level of pressure, either through crits and just one energy playing two cards, or in your case, if you're a scouter, you play a card, plays another card, right? Potentially. Yeah, they're they're they are very similar. I mean, mine is is more um, number of swings, and yours seems to be playing things uh, unexpectedly and catching the opponent off guard is what it felt like. And let me say that Raditz is bullshit when it comes to their battle cards. <laughs> they're all sixteen Ks, so like every yeah. attack your opponent has to like. Great, it's always a force combo. But with a 16k battle card, you just need to combo one card, and your opponent still has to combo. I guess that's still the same regardless, but you don't have to expend any resources, you know? Like, you're already right. at that 1k advantage. And then, like, if I yeah. want to take it out, though, I have to combo a card out just to take it out. It's not like, oh, it's 15 on 15, no, it's 15 on 16. Yeah, definitely defensively, 16k is more significant than offensively. Um, I mean, it's it. I, I'm used to playing SS4 Bardock, and a lot of those cards are 16k, so I kind of felt at home here. Um, but one of the interesting things about the Raditz deck is potentially your uh, the Awakened Leader side wants your Raditz cards to get KO'd to be able to play other things. So it's kind of an interesting um, uh, dance back and forth between letting your Raditz die uh, and and going in for those swings. Yeah. So. Let's, since I'm going to turn two, I'm about to start doing some things that this deck likes to do. And I will say, it, during this turn, I feel like I jumped the gun a bit. Um, I have played this deck kind of before, but this is the first time being on camera. So Special Beam Cannon is kind of like the clutch to this deck. It's what makes the Piccolo so, uh, so powerful. And it's how your leader flips over so on the front side of the leader, it has the auto where if you're, once your life is six or when you activate a special beam cannon, you will flip the leader over, draw one card. You do not go down to six. I think I accidentally go down to six when I did this, um, which changes a few things. So like the first, I want to say tur turn, turn, turn two into your turn two could have been played differently. And I just messed up on that part. And we'll talk about it as it happens. But here... The leader on swing draws a card, take a card from your life. It helps you go down to six. So, like, if you go second, sorry, in this case, if you go first, like, if I didn't come out of that attack and let you hit me, then I could have just awakened right then and there by swinging my one attack and then I'm swinging a 20k at you because I am going to come out a card off. But the special beam cannon, on trigger when you attack with Piccolo, it gives it Piccolo crit. You got a Goku on board, you can pop the Goku, uh, and it'll give the uh, attacking card a plus 15k which is pretty nice. And the card, in case you guys can pick up on, is the the one that I comboed with, is the Double Strike Piccolo from the Star Deck Gohan deck. And what makes this card unique is that when it uh, when it's played the Goku effect, the Goku negates all the non-keyword skills, so it keeps the Double Strike. And here, I'm swinging a 15k crit, and you took that. I just took advantage, swung the, the Piccolo, uh, popped Special Beam Cannon to... Give it the crit, popped it, Goku to give it the plus 15k. And now I'm swinging a double uh, double strike crit 35k, I think. I even have to combo any cards. Yeah. And I should be awakened right now, by the way, too. Yeah, I had a big decision to make there because uh, I felt like... I needed my hand, uh, and I, I was I was terrified at this point in time because I'm like, turn two, what else is he able to get out there? And here you go, keep playing things, and I'm like, dude, this is way faster than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, but I, like I said, I should be at seven life now because it doesn't take you down to six life. And here's where it gets tricky. So what the leader does innately is that when I uh, pass turn to you, I get to resand the leader, and an energy. I don't know why the leader's not resud yet, but 
There you go. And then you will attack. If you choose to attack into a Piccolo, I will then just block with the leader, have the leader take the damage, and then I will flip the leader back over because that's how this card worked, and that could draw on your turn. But because I would have been forced to go down to six life. And then that changes my entire turn too, so because I can't flip back over yeah, your turn, mm -hmm. so then I'm stuck on my awakened side for the turn until the end of my turn. Which, uh, it does change a little bit of things, but it is what it is, unfortunately, in the situation. Talk a little about your deck now. Yeah, so uh, one of the interesting things about kind of the way that this uh, match played out is I think your your leader likes to go second. Mine prefers to go first because most of my stuff doesn't stop pop start popping off until I have at least two or three energy. Um, so already I kind of felt a little bit at a disadvantage. Um, I am awakened, so I do get a chance to um, get a little bit of extra value with my Raditz cards. Um, but playing that Scouter in that Nappa, I am now tapped out. Um, and yes, that Nappa is 16K, but I kind of want to try to keep it on the board if I can, because uh, when I play a Scouter, it allows me to draw a card. Um, so at this point in time, you know, every time that I, I swing... Um, it's not getting to that piccolo because anything that's got critical or double strike, I want to try to get off of the board. And the deck itself is really good at removing things from the board. Um, but, uh, you know, it, I, I just, the whole match, I felt a little bit behind uh, because of going second. Yeah. And this is the last time I'll bring it up. In, in this particular setup, I would have lost piccolo in that moment because I would not have been able to activate the the negate box. Like, so we're gonna get past that now. So turn three, you now know what this deck can potentially do. And there is a play that could happen, but I need the Z energy for it. There is a Goku in the Z deck uh that goes really well with this deck. It's what came from the set. It I can't remember if it has unplay effect, but the, the big thing for it is that when it's popped, when it's KO'd, it removes one of your opponent's cards. I think it's four or less. So that in combination with the Touch Beam Cannon, you're practically removing, um, sorry, that with a combination of a, um, of a, a Gohan I play, I think removes up to two cards, and one of those, like, hits a card that's above your opponent's energy, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. And then its other effect is that you get to restand a Piccolo when its attacks negate it, and then your opponent can't activate blocker for the turn. So in a situation like this, I could have, if, I've had, if I was able to establish it, you negate it here, then you just gave me free range to then swing with another uh, the Piccolo, giving it the crit, making it, keeping it double strike, and putting you in a really threatening spot. But because I didn't have a Z energy, I couldn't kind of go into that setup. Yeah, and this board presence that you've built up with very little energy is it's is pretty incredible. Yeah, Roshi playing a Goku. Now granted, Goku's effects are negated, so he can't play a Piccolo. Still a body. Yeah, and this, <laughs> you but, know. But this pick, this Goku is the blocker Goku. So once I pass my turn, it's now protecting um other cards. And as long as I have a Goku in on board, you can't um um Attack Piccolo. Attack the Piccolos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I don't know yeah. why I'm spacing on that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, playing some of these. I don't know if they're considered rogue, but not really featured decks from the set is always really interesting because, like, I know the Boogeyman in U Seven, right? I know the Boogeyman in in uh, Go Hanks, right? Um, or uh, uh, yeah, Go Tanks. But uh, this, I'm I'm not sure what I'm even looking for, <laughs> you know? Um, and I think that that's something that got people caught off guard uh, this week with Raditz as well. They weren't expecting me to be able to play three or four different 16Ks for two energy or three energy. Uh, I could have given that Pickle an additional 5K in double strike, made you force you to get rid of another card. I I think I wanted to go into my turn with two of energy, though, and that's why I didn't do that. I feel like it would have been better just to swing the presence there and maybe even come with the Goku off just to kind of get that extra like 10k additional power onto you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would have put me in a bad spot. Oh, I wanted to play this card. Never mind. 
<laughs> there I was forget. a method to the madness. I forgot. I just put him in there. Yeah. Because I haven't played this third drop Goku yet. So yeah, then he plays double track once again. It doesn't have unique, so it's good to stay on the board. Here I'm baiting out your blocker because this is also 15k crit. And then I'm going to swing here. You do have open energy, so now if you wanted to negate again, you can, which you end up doing. And I yeah. I should have comboed on that Goku swing just to get another card in my Z energy to set up for future turns. I just didn't do it. I feel like I'll just do it during um, your battle steps. Yeah, and I was in a, a weird spot that last turn because I had I had two. I you know I didn't have any uh, open energy, and I only had like three cards in my uh, in my drop, so I couldn't sparking the gate. Um, so that's really one of the important things about having uh, a placekeeper for your token negates. Because had I left that on the board, I wouldn't have realized that I had five in the drop. <laughs> so it's nice to have a token uh, instead of just leaving that card on the board. But here's that spice that I talk about in the deck profile coming. This, this is, I was not expecting it. And this right here, the ability to pop cards. Now, one of the Piccolo has barrier. But, yeah, you don't have to target my cards. But they're going away regardless now. Yeah. Yeah, this is a, this is a nice little addition. Um, and I like the fact that it draws me a card and restands an energy at the end of the turn. Because, as I mentioned, a lot of my 16Ks will, pay, will play for one. Um, or off of other effects, uh, which is really nice. Now you had you had motion to chase right next to us at the beginning of the the game. Was that a good uh, oh, reveal of your hand? <laughs> I had <laughs> it not in my hand. I had two of the six drops, two of the five drops, and two. Um, I think the three drop Goku's, and I was like, "What kind of hand is this?" <laughs> like, it, like it just was a very half decent hand, pretty much. But the fact that yeah. they were like two, two, and two. So here we're just. I think you're trying to figure out what you want to um, hit. I think that's what you're doing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I am negating. So now you can't swing with Nappa. Like you mentioned earlier, you're not really attacking with Nappa. So, it is what it is in that situation. Yeah, and that Nappa also has a nice little effect that you can use a mono blue, uh, say, in with 5k uh, from the drop in a combo once per turn. So if I have, it's not limit one, so if I have more multiple of those, I get to draw multiple cards for playing a scouter, and I also get to use that effect multiple times per turn. You do play this so, card, and then you kind of, I think you end up just passing after this because oh no, you can still play a two more cards for all that, yeah, yeah, or another card. Yeah, it's just got to have to have a different name than the one that I played. And that's the good old uh, super rare, right? No, that no, yeah, yeah, that's that's the SR, yeah, that's it should be a negate. I mean, it plays better as a negate, but it's a dual attack blocker. Um, so it'll allow me to have not just the the Raditz that I'm going to restand and give blocker with my leader at the end of the turn, but also have another one on board. And it's uh, blockers are in an interesting spot right now because especially if you're playing against a, a yellow meta, uh, there's lots of cards that will neg skills, and that just makes everyone sad that that has a blocker. So I'm trying to figure out how hard I want to go because um, once again I can't I can't attack those piccolos so um, I figure I might as well just just go for you try to whittle down some of that life and I know that I want to at least uh, have one of those raddits in rest mode um, so that I can restand it and give a blocker at the end of the turn and I could have walked into one of those attacks with my Goku on board. Uh... But there was a level, like, I just want to see what I could get out of my hand. You're tapped out. So, like, going into the next turn, you're almost, um, it, it, you need to play your turn very carefully, pretty much. Like, you saw how fast I could get a board presence. I already have sure. three cards here, and technically, 
sorry, four cards there. And of those four cards, three of them are attacking because when the, the token's a 10k, so I just got to block attack with the token and then combo off the Roshi afterwards, you know? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it's at least th- four attacks coming at you. One being the Piccolo, you know, which will gain crit. Here I'm looking. I'm looking at the Goku right now. I'm like, oh, I could play the Goku, but I decide not to. I'm like, I, I want to bait his Dimension Magic first, you know, or even your Blocker token. Which I guess in this case it'd been better to play the Goku because if you play the Blocker token, then you're definitely done. Um, but you, I think you have a Blocker. You have one Blocker on board right now, but you wouldn't be able to block got, with it yeah, after that. Both Raditz. Yeah, both of those Raditz have Blockers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, one but, for the leader and the other one in here. But if I would have established the Z extra card, or Z battle card, and then you, on your first, say if you did negate the first attack, which you probably would just would have blocked, which is fine, um, then I could have proc the effect and any additional attacks can't be blocked. But I'm like, I need to bait that attack out first. So I swing here, and you hatch. Yep. And it wasn't with a Piccolo, so I couldn't proc the... Um, Stream cannon. I couldn't flip my leader over, so now I'm a 10k leader going into your turn, right? And this was like, oh, this is bad. <laughs> I hate that card so much. <laughs> I was not yeah. expecting hatch, I don't know like yeah. what it was. And I, I just- have. Yeah, I had that one from the very beginning of my, uh, fortunately, from the very beginning of the game, so I just held on to it, and I started to notice you were doing a lot during your attack phase uh, or battle step. I had the Gohan in my hand, too. I forgot about that. So, yeah, I should have just established it because I could have still, if I saw the Piccolo first, I could have at least popped your hatch and then the uh, your Super Rare as well because mm-hmm. between the Gohan and the Goku being popped, I could, I say, remove two cards. Oh, man. <laughs> looking back on it definitely should have tackled the piccolo but this unison it's a bitch as well um <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely my two secret rares <laughs> and it, it just sucks that like you snipe the piccolo first because it doesn't have barrier so i was able to block the first attack um and at this point i'm really just trying to do what i can to just do something but you pretty much, at the, I'm just going to say, it, you have the game. Like, I have, like, I think that I'm, I have, like, yeah, two cards in my hand. You still have at least four more attacks. This isn't going to do much. You still have, you have enough cards in your hand to get all these attacks off. Uh, and because I couldn't awaken, I'm now sitting, like I said, at a 15k leader instead of what should have been a 20k leader. Mm-hmm. Moral of the story, you attack with your piccolos because those are important to attack with. <laughs> Lesson learned, right? <laughs> And play the stupid Goku Z battle card. Um, yeah. I took it to negate off, but the auto is a limit one, so you're still just having to bomb deck one card at a time, and that was it. And I didn't see any super combos. So I'm here. Where the hell were all the super combos? But with that being said, uh, Raditz took victory because this is an unofficial Time Wars uh, match. Thank you all for tuning in. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you all for tuning in. Keep mind those buttons, links, and bye.